Well, we got to look at Obi-Wan. We got to look at She-Hulk. We got to look at Moon Knight. And we got a bunch of announcements and fun things to look forward to. All in a Twitter thread. Well, we're going to find the good in all that Disney Plus Day recaps and announcements here on Riley's Cantina. Thanks for joining me here. Let's get it on. Welcome in, everybody. It is Mark Riley here on Riley's Canteen on a special Friday. We are doing a Disney Plus Day recap, which I was a little uh, I was a little surprised at the presentation. I'm not going to lie. But we are going to find the good in this because there's a lot of breakdown in the news, in the announcements, in the little looks that we saw, um, and something to get excited about. But if I'm being completely honest, I think after DC Fandom, I was expecting something more. And I wonder what you guys think about that. What were you expecting from Disney Plus Day? I mean, I did a Twitch stream on it. I did a video on it. We did speculation. We were going around the horn on Twitter talking about we're going to see Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer. and We're going to lose our ever-loving mind. And we didn't. We saw a sizzle reel, which was awesome. Leaked early. Saw it then. They pulled it back. And now it's there and we're okay. Everybody's okay now. We're fine. Thank you. Uh, how are you? Is what I would ask everybody. Because I think the hype machine was on overload. And uh, I think there have been precedents set in the DC fandom presentations. Some of the Comic-Con stuff that they were doing at home. In the time of a pandemic uh, where this is more of the norm. I was expecting fire. I was expecting lots of bells, lots of whistles. I was expecting a lot. And what we got was a Twitter thread. And I was a little disappointed. Maybe it's because I was really tired. I got up at 6 a.m. I prepped a bunch of stuff last night, getting ready for this. And then I got up at 6 a.m. after staying up a little too late. Uh, and thank you to everybody that joined me last night on twitch.tv slash Mark Riley. Me, we watched. The final episode of Mandalorian season two, chapter 13, I believe it was, The Rescue. Uh, and we hyped out and we got all excited and we had fun. And that was over there on Twitch if you want to join me sometime. We go live there every once in a while. But with that being said, that was what the hype train was doing for us, our, especially the Star Wars fans. Uh, we'll get to Marvel. We'll get to all the announcements and everything. I'm just getting, I'm getting, I'm, 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 I'm uh, curbing the enthusiasm right now. I'm taking notes. I'm um, Monday morning quarterbacking this. So we were all excited and uh, we wanted this to be uh, a big event. And I and I saw <laughs> a lot of the reactions immediately, uh, including, you know, a number of people that were really I think Obi-Wan Kenobi was the thing that everybody was really, really looking forward to. I mean, we've only been asking Ewan McGregor if he's coming back as Obi-Wan Kenobi for now 37 years. Every time the, the, the poor man was doing a, a press junket for like Dr. Sleep or, or Fargo. It's like, what are you doing, Obi-Wan? And then we're finally getting Obi-Wan. And he's, he even says in the video, he's like, this is what the fans have been wanting. And we're all, it, we convinced ourselves, and I did a lot of that, helping out everybody. and say, we're getting a trailer. I've heard this. I've heard the rumors. A trailer is incoming. And it didn't, you know, but what we did get was very exciting. We're going to break that down. When it comes to the Marvel side of thing, I think Marvel did a little bit better, although it was a little hard to find in this Twitter thread. I thought it was a little discombobulated. It was all over the place. And the poor people, the Patrick Dempsey's, the Bette Midler's, the, the artists, the producers, <laughs> they were tagged on that Twitter thread. And so they were treated. I'm sure they all mute, muted it, but they were all treated to a lot of... Um, Perhaps disappointed fans screaming, where's Obi-Wan? Not in Hocus Pocus, uh, Pocus 2, that's for sure. Bette Midler knows that. Anyways, I want to thank everybody for joining me here. This is a special Riley's Cantina. Let's recap this. Let's find the good in what we did get. I want to hear from you. I, I missed some stream labs on the last stream, so I'm going to get to some of those because they uh, actually have everything to do with the conversation today. Streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. If you want to get any questions, get, add to the conversation. Anything and everything helps. Of course, Super Chats. 
are always welcome. I'll answer them throughout the show. You guys tell me what you thought. You start some conversations here that we can explore and get to the bottom of. Because at the very end of this, there was a little piece, this, this, this surprise, I should say, that did drop. And that's the, um, the silver lining, I'm going to say, for the day. Jordan comes in here with a super chat. I appreciate it, my friend. I think we forget Investor Day last year was the big news event. Yep. D plus day was just as simple as I expected. Love having you back on your own channel. Jordan, thanks, man. I love being back as well. And I appreciate everybody that's coming in here now. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Get back to it. We're doing uh, Riley's Canteen and we'll be coming to you live every Tuesday and Thursday. That's going to be the main schedule moving forward. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. Pacific. We're going to keep the time frame that we had on Tuesdays at the GPA. And now that I'm moving home, I'm going to expand that and do another one. There's going to be some short videos coming. Trailer reactions. I was ready to go. I was ready to go today for Obi-Wan to make that my debut. I was going to lose my shit. But I had already seen the leak. It came out yesterday. Say la vie. Over to Streamlabs. I want to get to those right away. I missed them the other day. Um, so we have a Fredtastic 314. Thank you so much, by the way, for the Streamlabs. And they write, hey, Mark, glad to hear you're back. Excited for the future shows. I want a Sabine and Ezra reunited story, one that doesn't, doesn't end with falling to the dark side. Now, that was something I was really speculating on pretty hard. We were going to get news on Ahsoka. We were going to get a whole cast list. So, and that's, again, going to this hype machine, uh, maybe this online kind of world we live in now where we fill in a lot of blanks, don't we? Not only with story, movies, and now events. We wanted this thing to be like a, a fandom or a, a Comic-Con at home, perhaps. And it's Disney. It's the biggest brand in the friggin' world. So I was expecting a full list of uh, cast confirmations, uh, Ahsoka especially, um, because I think the Ahsoka show is going to absolutely be a sequel somewhat in live live action to Rebels. We're going to get Sabine. We're going to get Ezra. We're going to get Thrawn. And we're going to have to tie that into the Mandalorian time frame. And I think they're going to pop in there. And I think Boba Fett is going to have something to do with it. And uh, my ongoing theory right now is that Thrawn might act as the Thanos of the Star Wars streaming universe that could then spill out into movies. We can dream, can't we? That's what I want. So Ahsoka Tano, not much there. In fact, nothing there. What we did get was the Obi-Wan, uh, the, the previs stuff, which is awesome. That kind of stuff gets my ever-loving geek heart going. Uh, but no Ahsoka, no Rangers in the New Republic, uh, no Lando, no Alkalite, uh, no Mando Season 3, no Boba Fett. We got the trailer. We got the behind the mask. That's going to be, that's on. I can't wait to watch that. Um, but you know, Noam saying knows what he's saying. Expectations lead to disappointments. Disappointment leads to anger. Anger leads to suffering. Yes, that is absolutely right. Temper the expectations. Let's engage with what we did get and let's have fun. Tongue in cheek is going to be for me today because I am a little sarcastic and I am a little grumpy. You know why? I woke up at 6 a.m. expecting a big something. I took a nap. Going on to streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley here. We got Obi-Wan is in here. Thank you, Obi-Wan. Thomas, Thomas Seffer comes in with a streamlabs and says, are we going to see Kenobi in his clone armor? Uh, I do believe we, we will see that. I do believe we're going to see Obi-Wan Kenobi in his clone armor. Uh, Hayden Christensen is now back uh, in the sizzle reel. We have, and you saw it, you and McGregor, you saw it in his eyes. He says, I get to be back together with Aiden. That was a decent accent, I would say. Um, yeah, he's back with Hayden Christensen. So I do believe we can get flashbacks. In fact, I would I would say that the story calls for it. I I, I think we can we are going to examine uh the fall of that friendship, obviously, the fall of Anakin Skywalker, but what it might do for Obi-Wan Kenobi if you consider the story of Obi-Wan and what he is tasked with doing, and that is taking and watching over. The future chosen one, Luke Skywalker. Or if you believe George Lucas, it was Anakin. Maybe it is Luke. But anyways, the idea of the character of Obi-Wan 
at the lowest point in his life, I think is absolutely, I look like a, a freaking uh, college professor or something. When you consider the relationship between Anakin and Obi-Wan, anyways. When you consider the relationship between Obi-Wan and Anakin, I think it makes for great storytelling. And Obi-Wan is going to go deep into, I think, that story. What it must feel like. You're my brother, Anakin. I loved you. He says that to a dying Anakin on Mustafar as he's burning to death. Obi-Wan had the high ground. And he took it, and he took the lightsaber, and he walked off. Now, does Obi-Wan consider, does, does he think that that's it? Anakin's dead? We didn't explore that. I wonder what it might be like in story to see Obi-Wan Kenobi get a force vision. And I think that might come from Liam Neeson's Qui-Gon Jinn. Uh, thank you, John Mariano from Liverpool. I know that Beatles documentary looks great. That does. That was a, that was a high point. Saul, love having you here, my friend. Just want to let everybody know me and Don Cheadle fan club will be marching on Disney headquarters this weekend after today's snub. Yeah. I was hoping we would get some uh, Armor Wars stuff, but uh, alas. Alas, we did not. All right, going to some more Streamlabs here. Make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, we have uh, uh, Tony Stark is back. I always get this Tony Stark one when I was doing it last year. Uh, sorry I missed this yesterday, uh, right? Yes, uh, Wednesday, uh, Tony Stark. Not much from Tony Stark these days, huh? So I appreciate this. Uh, Tony Stark asks, uh, when will we get uh, an announcement for Ahsoka and is the Rangers of the New Republic dead? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, again, kind of touching on Ahsoka. I thought we'd get a big, big announcement today and we didn't. Unfortunately, we didn't. Um, I was hoping for some um, confirmation on characters returning like Thrawn, Sabine, Ezra. Rumors are out there that that's been cast. Uh, at least that's what I've heard. Um, so, you know, as far as uh, Rangers New Republic, I think that's um that is a ripe and fer fertile ground of story. What are the politics like in the uh, New Republic after the fall of the Empire? Could we hint at the First Order, the rise of the First Order? Um, are there emp uh, Empire sympathizers that then get folded into the government? of uh, the new republic there's so much to explore i hope that we get there um the foot soldiers that are enforcing the new republic law i think that that's where they were going x-wing pilots and commandos and all that kind of stuff uh all right that's it for the Streamlabs from uh wednesday so if you have any new ones uh, streamlabs.com slash mark riley is right there super chats of course always welcome let's get into the marvel stuff and get excited uh here's what we got announced secret invasion we had a uh, brief look at Moon Knight, which I want to break down with you. She-Hulk, another brief look at that. Echo was finally confirmed uh, part of a, a Daredevil is going to be uh, a big, I, I think, a part of this. Uh, something that got me excited, an animated series, Spider-Man freshman year looks amazing. I am Groot, Iron Heart, so confirmation there that we are going to get um, uh, a continuation somewhat of like who could be taking over the the mantle of Iron Man. Confirmation, Agatha, House of Harkness. So that's cool. Miss Marvel, of course. Marvel Zombies. That's That one got me. I love that. That's going to be exciting. X-Men 97. Also very excited for that. Basically a continuation of the great 90s animated X-Men series that a lot of us grew up on. And of course, season two of What If. Give me that. So let's uh, talk about that. What did you guys think of the presentation? Now, I'll start with Moon Knight because we did get a tiny look. And what I'm seeing, I'm liking. I know there were some people out there, Oscar Isaacs, they didn't like his voice. I don't know. Yeah, I liked it a lot. What I noticed is the darkness. And that's needed for this character, Mark Spector. Um, and we got, we got a glimpse of him kind of beating the shit out of somebody, maybe. Jumping from the rooftops and, and considering his existential dread in the mirror kind of sort of thing. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. I'm glad we got something. Um, if we move over to She-Hulk, the other one that we got, uh, confirmation, of course, Mark Ruffalo's there, the Hulk, uh, Cousins, and a, uh, a nice nod to, of course, the mythology of the Hulk. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. 
give me this. I love that. I love the titling. I love the way it looks. It does feel like a legal kind of comedy from the nineties. Um, I like that there's inspiration behind the, the Hulk series uh, that we got a wandering Hulk, so to speak, but it, it looks playful. It looks fun. I'm into it. Uh, and that's about it for, for the, the, like the live footage of things, but we got excited for some of these, you know, the Marvel TV series that really get me excited are Secret Invasion, as I said the other day, She-Hulk, definitely, Moon Knight, I'm, I'm through the roof for it. Uh, but I was wondering if we were going to get any kind of confirmations on anything or any kind of announcements like a uh, season two, perhaps, Falcon and Winter Soldier, uh, maybe something um, uh, from Wakanda. There was a series that we were uh, maybe going to get Wakanda, I believe. Uh, then any other kind of updates, but we didn't get that, unfortunately, no. So if we move on over to Star Wars land, this is where it gets good, for me at least. Now in the realm of Star Wars, just an Obi-Wan sneak peek, and I want to break into a lot of that and as to why. But look at this beautiful pre -vis. Look at the worlds we're going to go in to Obi-Wan. Look at what we got here. A very reminiscent, that bottom picture of the ice planet of Hoth. Maybe we will get some of the um, inklings of the Rebel Alliance setting up shop on Hoth in the future. We also get, look at this, looks like an underwater imperial fortress. Could this be on Naboo? Wouldn't it be interesting if they took over Naboo, where well, they did? And it's uh, Palpatine's home planet. And they built something, and they enslaved the Gungans, and perhaps Obi-Wan Kenobi needs to go talk to Jar Jar Binks. I said it. This gets me. This is beautiful. It looks like we're traveling to Mustafar. We're going to get Vader's castle, and he's there, communing maybe with the Emperor. I don't know. It looks beautiful. Give me this all day long. I am so friggin' excited for that. And look at Obi-Wan. Inquisitors are going to be there. Deborah Chow said in the sizzle reel, she's like, guess what? Jedi Hunters, yep. And then they flash to an Inquisitor here. Obi-Wan in the desert. This is what we've always wanted. This is what we had in our mind. Old Ben that lives out on the Dune Sea. A little closer there. And then, of course, the mega promise to end all promises. The prequel to the final match in New Hope. So some of my colleagues out there calling uh, calling out some headlines out there going, we've been waiting for this rematch. And everybody's like, uh, actually, New Hope was the rematch. But anyways, semantics. But that promise that we are going to get Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi with the duel that I think will cover, color in to the comments in Return of the Jedi, Obi-Wan once thought as you did. Okay, why would he say that? Because he wasn't saying that as he was, you know, in flames on the side of a lava, you know, sea on Mustafar. So I believe that we are going to get this kind of exploration into what happened. The, uh, the idea that um, Obi-Wan is feeling maybe guilty, that Darth Vader has fallen fully to the dark side, and that maybe Obi-Wan thinks he can help. He can rescue. He can save him from that. There's still good in him. I felt it, right? Maybe he does feel it. Maybe he does have that kind of interesting take on things. And he goes, wait a minute. I do, I do see some good. And then when it goes to him finally confronting Vader, maybe he breaks through a little bit and we get some flashes of when uh, Darth Vader has that lightsaber and he's holding it behind Luke. Because there's that moment in Return of the Jedi that I always thought was very poignant. And that was when Luke turns his back on Vader. Okay, and Vader gives him a good stare, lights the lightsaber, ignites the lightsaber. But I, I think there's that moment, that pregnant pause at the end of that scene where Vader considers Luke's words. Maybe they hit here. Does it happen with Obi-Wan? Does Obi-Wan go and try and sense and feel and then the duel happens and some, I mean, and Vader almost kills him. Or maybe Obi-Wan, maybe Obi-Wan gets him again. 
and he can't he can't kill him. He can't bring himself to kill him. I mean, there's a lot to explore here that I'm so excited. And those images, and then the the footage of the lightsaber training with the mask on. My God, we're in for some good stuff here. Some good Star Wars. Little bummed about the presentation. So now. Uh, those are my spiels. That's kind of the uh, the big recap on everything. Now, if we go to some of the other things, you know, we got our um, Zootopia uh, series. We have some um, Pixar series coming. There's a less excited for me, but more I'm more for the movie stuff that ties into the movie stuff that ties into the bigger kind of picture here. Ahsoka Tano being one of my favorites. How is that going to impact the Obi-Wan? Not Obi-Wan, but I should say uh, Mandalorian. And uh, how is Book of Boba Fett going to be a part of this? So I'll be talking now to you guys. If you want to uh, give me your thoughts on what you thought of the whole thing. Oh, we do need to touch on Willow. Thanks, Noam Sane. Willow was really fun. It was really fun to see Warwick Davis um, uh, shooting the shit with his cast in a, in a kind of an extras way uh, in a kind of um, – this uh, kind of this documentary, faux documentary kind of way. It's tongue in cheek, really fun, you know. You know, oh, it's my favorite, you know, uh, second favorite fantasy to, to to Lord of the Rings. Like you didn't need to you didn't need to say it that way, but I really enjoyed the the look at it. I again, um, we're fi we find the good in all of this, right? And there's a lot of good there to be excited about. But I thought the presentation was lackluster, and uh, we were expecting more. And I think uh, when you consider the hype that comes when you debut a lot of things like DC fandom got, uh, you know, the Batman and the flash black Adam, you know, they really rocked our socks off. They gave us something to chew on. And for many, many days after we were talking about it now, it could be because maybe they don't want to take away from book of Boba Fett. That is right around the corner. But then again, right around the corner is, over a month away. So I think the hype train would only help with that. So everything was fun that we did get, and you should be excited for all this. We're all nerds here. Uh, again, just critique. The presentation was lackluster. I think we all wanted something a lot more fun. No, I'm saying, yeah, depending on the YouTubers to generate the hype. I mean, sure, we help. But there's also a backlash that happens with um, in the fandom. Something doesn't land the, 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 the proper way. Oh, boy, you'll hear about it, right? That's what will happen. And I don't necessarily subscribe to that way where, you know, at first, I mean, I was uh, a little bummed because I got up so early and I wanted to do some great trailer reactions and I want to have fun and get hyped. I mean, when we're all hyped, I mean, look at what happened after Mandalorian season two. That finale when... Uh, I mean, of course, that's part of the whole streaming experience. So I'll liken it to when the Batman trailer dropped. I mean, that got the hype train going. People were excited. People did reactions. People got on streams. They talked about it. They sent in questions, and everybody kind of united around this idea that Robert Pattinson is this Batman that looks pretty bitching. And today, I think it's it, what what Disney did with their presentation, I, I believe, is they 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 fell short. And I think they let a lot of us down in that they could have had this big presentation that would have just taken us all the way through the weekend. And, um, you know, our wick, honestly, I loved it. They do not have to market the MCU films. Yeah. But I do believe they should have showed some star Wars stuff. Yeah. I think especially with star Wars with, um, everything that's kind of in question, we just had Patty Jenkins movie delayed. Uh, that led to a lot of people talking about Old Republic movies and rumors swirling. And then, you know, this the streaming world that we're in right now when it comes to the Star Wars content. Mandalorian just hit the ground running. We're getting Book of Boba Fett in November or sorry, December. So that's a little bit of time to wait. Now we got Hawkeye that's coming real fast here. And I'm hearing good things. Anka Van Duren is here, my friend. But uh, yeah, so I don't, it's, uh, it's it, you know, like I said, I was a little bit bummed, but we are getting all the good stuff. Uh, we got confirmation. So I do want to go back to the Marvel stuff, though. Echo really interests me. Echo is one of those that really interests me because I know that she is tied to 
the uh, Daredevil universe. I do want to do some research on this because I'm not too familiar uh, Disney Plus show. So Alakwa has have a beautiful name. Alakwa Cox says Maya Lopez. This is announced. Finally, it's kicking into high gear. We got this announcement here. Uh, now, if I go down, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's not much information there. That's just basically tweeting. Uh, it's the Hawkeye spinoff Echo. Sorry. So it's, but I know this, this character is tied to the comics to Daredevil. And it does make me think of the leak that was happening and some of the rumors swirling around Charlie Cox coming back as Daredevil, um, maybe showing up in Spider-Man. I'm trying, I'm walking around the leaks out there, folks. If you want to be saying, you know, most people were spoiled. I'm sure. That's right. Gnome. That's right. Thank you very much. I was trying to connect it. It's Kingpin's adopted daughter. That's the tie over to Daredevil. So you can work Daredevil in here, but I know it is going to be working as a spinoff from Hawkeye. She, she is in Hawkeye, I believe. So the big question is, are we going to get Vincent D'Onofrio returning as Kingpin? I think we could see that. I think we could absolutely see that. And I'm excited for the possibilities of that, right? Uh, yep. So probably, uh, yeah, D'Onofrio action. I was like, Dino Frio? Streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. If you want to get in the question, super chats, all these get highlighted, get put there, uh, put there in as well. Um, if we go to next on some of the things that I'm absolutely looking forward to, let's get into She-Hulk because it's interesting to me, the angle that they're going with She-Hulk in that we are getting this legal drama, legal comedy, Ali McBeal kind of feeling with a Tatiana Mas a Maslani. I, that one gets me really, really excited for Hulk. I'm such a huge Mark Ruffalo fan and being a Hulk fan. And I love the idea of him having a cousin and then being a part of this. It's like, what gets me so excited about all of these is that we are, the movies are just spilling right into these long, longer series where we get to just have these great deep kind of understandings of character. And then it's going to go right back into the movie. So we are into this new kind of, this golden age of Marvel that I think we're reverse engineering that with Star Wars. I think we're starting with Mandalorian. We're starting streaming. We're done with Skywalker saga. Allie McTeel, Allie McBeal. Uh, and then we're going to spill into the movies. That's, I think, the destination we hope as fans. And I think Disney Plus and I think Disney Lucasfilm, I think that's where they say they're going. So if we break down the rest of the stuff out there, I want to hear from you guys. And what are some of the things that you're most excited about for Disney Plus? I know we also got the Spiderwick Chron uh, Chronicles adaptation announced at Disney Plus. Um, we got uh, Marvel Zombies, which gets me really, really excited. Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Roderick Rules, an animated movie, is coming to Disney Plus in 2022. Uh, we're also getting cars on the road, Disney plus they're bringing back Owen Wilson and Larry, the cable guy. So that's exciting. Zootopia. It's a short form series from the world of animal tastic Disney movies. They're, uh, they're going to be out there. Zootopia, which I love one of my favorite, I would say Disney movies. Echo, of course, Ironheart. This is what's interesting. Why we went, we got the Ironheart logo and we got the series, but this is what I wanted to touch on. Did it get you guys as well? No dates, really. We just kind of got thumbnails. Sammy Leo Mendoza. Hi, my friend. Yeah, and Ronan Unchained. X-Men 97 shocked me and lit me up. That's my childhood. Uh, isn't that awesome? See, this is what's great, is that these announcements did give so many people joy because I think that was what we took from it. You know, we didn't want to necessarily angrily tweet at the celebrities tagged on me. It's like, Bette Midler's like, why does everybody keep saying Obi-Wan? That's in my head. Anyways, Ironheart is something that I'm very, very excited about because of uh, the idea that we can expand into um, what it's like in the tech world from the ground level. From uh, the character will be introduced, by the way, and I'm looking for... Um, the name because it's uh, escaped me 
blah, 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 blah. Come on, get to it. Oh, boy. If I was an editor on this one. Yeah, I get it. I know there are word counts you want to get to. Riri Williams, thank you very much. Finally, in the fifth paragraph down. Uh, the show is based on uh, based on the Iron Heart comic, the alias of 15-year-old Riri Williams, a character created in 2016 by writers Brian Michael Bendis and artist Mike Diodato. Did I, am I pronouncing that line uh, right? She's a super genius engineering student who attends the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And while there, she accidentally builds a super suit similar to Stark's Iron Man armor using materials stolen from campus. But, of course, Stark loves a rebellious spirit. When he hears of her accomplishment, he anoints her to be the next great metal glad superhero, uh, superheroine. But, of course, we are in the world now without Tony Stark. So that's what's interesting to me. Riri Williams is going to be introduced. Uh, what did I say? In Black Panther, Wakanda for, uh, forever. So that's going to be fun to see. And then maybe that's how we are going to get. Is she Wakandan now? Are they going to move that kind of uh, mythology in the comics and change it up to fit the, fit the MCU? That's fine. But I was hoping we'd get a lot more than just a logo. I was hoping we would definitely get uh, some casting news and because um, I don't know much about this one. But at least we're getting confirmation that it's happening. And that's exciting. Look at Ken's sport cow here. My friend, how are you? Welcome to Riley's Cantina. And thank you, everybody, for joining me here. So many of you uh, listening and watching right now, please hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel to get back in the swing of things. Riley's Cantina will be happening Tuesdays, Thursdays, 2 p.m. Pacific. Moving forward, this is your Disney Plus recap day. Were you excited for what we got? A lot of excitement in the chat here, and that makes me happy because at first I saw a lot of disappointment there. We wanted to see so much. And we got... Basically, I was talking to Ken Napsok earlier. It was like, we got a bunch of thumbnails. We got a, th we got a Twitter thread. John Mariano says, Riri Williams, an MIT student, accidentally makes, yep, fiction is greater than reality. I accidentally poured vodka into my Cheerios. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. So thank you, everybody, for joining me here on Riley's Cantina. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Like I said, Super Chats are welcome here if you want to throw a conversation my way. Willow, we got a super, uh, sorry, streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. And we got Brendan Mara in here writing a Streamlabs simply stating in all caps, Willow, exclamation point. What did you guys think of the presentation from Willow? And a lot of you, did you grow up on Willow like I did? Is Willow one of those um, nostalgia pieces? that get you excited where you look at that and you go, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me that. We got the Rocketeer as well coming, but uh, we didn't get any Rocketeer news. Sadly. Uh, so when it comes to Willow, Brennan, I'm share your excitement as well. And I did love the little peek that we got. And it was just a fun little sizzle, not even a sizzle reel. We saw nothing. We saw no kind of previs stuff. Like we saw in Obi-Wan. We just saw Warwick Davis having fun with the cast. And it was really nice seeing the cast together, riffing, improvising, having fun. It looks like they're sitting down for a table read on you know, the first episode. That's what it looks like to me. Not a lot there, so they're not going to put it out there. So you saw it in theaters. Oh, sorry. Missed that one. Willow, you saw it in theater. Yeah, I saw it in theaters too. Willow presentation was fun. I didn't grow up on it, but having seen it recently, it's fun. It is fun. It's really, really fun. It's a fun movie. I wonder how they're going to, I mean, it's like they were going to, they made that joke. Are they going to Irish man you? <laughs> Which I thought was hysterical. The idea of de-aging Willow or Warwick Davis, which they could do. They could do a flashback and go back to it, right? And de-age him a bit. Or they could just, I don't know, pick up years later, which is what they're going to do, I bet. Willow's now, uh, maybe married with a kid and all that kind of good stuff. Oh man. Yeah. Willow theme is one of my favorite underrated James Horner pieces. Yeah. Oh, rest in peace, James Horner. That he is one of the greats and bummed. We, uh, yeah, bummed. He's gone because that would have been great. I wonder who they will get for the Willow soundtrack. Thank you so much for the super chat here. No Tron news. I thought Disney had big plans to revive it with Jared Leto. Yeah. I don't know what happened with that Jody 
Tron is interesting. I know because Tron Legacy came, didn't do as well. I really like Tron Legacy. I don't think the 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 technology had caught up with the concept just yet. It was a little off, but it worked. Mark Fernandez is in here with Willow. <laughs> you got your Willow, man. Mark Fernandez, what'd you think of the Willow sizzle? What'd you think of the Disney presentation? I thought it was lackluster. Disappointing, but lots of golden nuggets to choose from the bunch that we were excited about. I don't know what's happened. Yeah, Tron, I know they were they were talking something with Jared Leto. I don't know if they're going to do that anymore. Uh, Jared Leto has plenty of franchises to spare. I don't know if he was going to be a part of this anymore. I don't know. There was no announcement, so... You haven't seen it. Okay, you didn't see it yet, but uh, you love Willow. Yeah. And I love Willow. Yeah, the Tron Legacy uh, soundtrack remix is dope. The idea that there's more news coming is what is getting me excited because after the dust settles today, and we'll talk to the future here, as we start to wrap everything up here on Riley's Cantina special, just there's not much to recap, guys. And that's and that's a bummer, I think, for a lot of us fans and a lot of us sweaties and nerds that want to just talk all day and get excited. But here's what we can get excited about knowing. Obi-Wan Kenobi is coming. We get, There's a trailer out there. And I think if I can speculate just a bit, I think because what they wanted to do is start to generate a lot of the interest. They wanted to start planting seeds for the shows that we're going to get. Your Echoes, your Ironhearts, your Zoot uh, Zootopias, your Pixar cars, your your Spider-Man, your, your X-Men. I mean, everybody's excited for the X-Men 97 animated series coming back. Your Marvel Zombies. It's like those plan they're planning those, right? And they're saying, you're going to get these. Confirmation. So that's supposed to feed us, and we're going to be excited for that. And it, and it does. I think that in the land that we're in right now, the social media landscape, the hype machine, the YouTubers, the uh, the discourse on Twitter, we were expecting a big presentation to knock our socks off so we could all go on Twitter and respectively yell and scream and, and celebrate. Your results may vary. Uh, but the idea that these are coming, I think that what happens, especially when you consider Obi-Wan Kenobi, when the Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer drops, that is the only thing we're going to be talking about for the rest of the day. Okay, there's going to be a million trailer reactions. There's going to be a million theories. There's going to be, there's going to be, this happens. Oh, I can't wait for this. Gonna end. this was going to bring it back from this. You know what I'm saying? So if they dropped in that Twitter thread that had Bette Midler and Patrick Dempsey tagged on it, that if in that Twitter thread, they dropped that Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer, that's it. Everything after that drop doesn't matter. The world would have melted in on itself watching this Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer because it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Deborah Chow is a fantastic director. Ewan McGregor, the joy is palpable even today. If you go back to some of the, the making of series and the prequels, which I love so much, the Blu-rays, the, the first looks, the after looks, the, the, the stories that we got, there's, there's one that stands out more than anything. And that's Ewan McGregor getting kicked and him doing the stunt with his lightsaber in Obi-Wan costume, falling from above, landing below, and he goes, I'm in Star Wars. And he gets up and he excitedly climbs out. And you flash forward 20-some-odd years later now, and uh, you have Ewan McGregor with that joy in his eyes, talking about Hayden Christensen coming back, coming back to Obi-Wan Kenobi. So that passion, that Everything is going to be in that trailer for us. It's going to be amazing. Um, I saw something in here. Mark Fernandez, I miss you too, man. He says, I miss Riley. We had the best combos. Love seeing all the support here. Uh, Mark Fernandez and I could talk Star Wars all day. Uh, in fact, dude, let's, let's, I mean, let's, let's do, let's do uh, something on here. Let's do a Star Wars conversation next week. Just, just randomly. Let's just, you and I get together, drop a stream, and just go. And I remember some of the best rule of twos were us sitting down going, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. I don't know. 
just start talking about Star Wars. And you and I, we disagree enough, but we agree enough that it just... So back to the Obi-Wan stuff. This is what just... I'm ending with Obi-Wan. I'm doing 20 minutes on Obi-Wan Kenobi. Get with me now, folks. Let's talk Obi-Wan. Let's talk serious about Obi-Wan because I'm gonna, we're going to save the Disney Plus Day presentation. Your Twitter feed was suspect. <laughs> it's fine. I'm being a jerk. It was fine. But when it comes to Obi-Wan, I understand sometimes what could have happened. Right? I understand what could, what, you know, they, uh, that, that, that thing drops, the, the internet's gone. We're get, I mean, that's all we're going to talk about. I mean, it could be, it's, it's like, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson, like, hey, my movie's out. It's like, shut up, you. Obi-Wan Kenobi's on the, the trailers. By the way, you see Paul Thomas Anderson loves Marvel and, and saw Venom. Great guy. There we go. When two people always agree, one of them is not needed. <laughs> that's correct. Yeah, yeah, I finally figured out my uh, my internet. So um, I'm glad the stream is going a lot better today. This is Riley's Cantina. This is, I am Mark Riley. Uh, thank you for making this show a part of your day. It's a little Disney Plus Day recap. I'm doing 20 minutes on Obi-Wan now and talking about why he's so special to me, why this show is going to just break the internet. Do have a Streamlabs coming in here. Streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley. If you want to get something in there, get a question to add to the mix. Well, do it. What's stopping you? Ronan Unchained is here. So gl glad to uh, have you back here, my friend. And he writes, hi, Mark. Do you think with the Star Wars TV shows, we're getting that they'll be integrating stuff from the comics like Crimson Dawn? Yes. Now, there was a rumor, Ronan, that Darth Maul, an animated show centering around maybe the underworld and Crimson Dawn was going to be happening with Darth Maul. I 100% uh, believe that that's going to happen. Uh, I just don't know when. And I was hoping today would be the day that they announced that. It makes a lot of sense when you consider maybe Rebels, Clone Wars. Um, it could act as a, a sequel to the last season of Clone Wars, um, where you just pick up and follow Darth Maul to his cahoots with Kira and the Crimson Dawn, the underworld. We could see a lot of familiar characters return. Young Han Solo could be interesting in an animated form. Uh, I'm going to earmuffs. Everybody, fuck yeah, give me that. God, I would love that. So I, I, they're going to, I feel, Ronan, they're going to incorporate a lot when it comes to the comics. Um, they can expand on a lot of things. Uh, look, we're, you know, we have precedent set with even Legends material is fair game. Kylo Ren is just Jason Solo, you know, the son of Han and Leia. No twins. No sister, but that idea there. And then, of course, Rise of Skywalker, Palpatine, when we pulled directly from Dark Empire. Sith Magic cloned himself. Just another guy, but they kind of reverse instead of a young Palpatine, he was going to be, it's it was old Palpatine, old and creepy, crusty Palpatine, uh, which is fine. It worked. But see, the precedent is set, though, for for using material in the comics uh, to enhance the story here. And so, yeah, I think Crimson Dawn is going to be, don't get, don't get me wrong here. And don't, don't fool yourself. There are a lot of people out there that are screaming for solo too. emphasis nest. Uh, the idea of Crimson Dawn underworld, Kira, Darth Maul. I think they're listening. We might get it in some form. Thank you. Movie Fenobi is here. Mark Riley tapping into unli unlimited broadcasting power. Life is, Life is balance, as is the force. I can't wait for Obi-Wan series. Mando was a great thing, but Ewan is just perfect. Movie Fenobi, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Thank you for the generous super chat. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, you guys can send those in super chats. Uh, welcome and also streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley, if you so desire. Obi-Wan Kenobi is by far my number one. I mean, this is like levels of Force Awakens first star wars back kind of feelings and so when you consider this disney plus day i believe obi-wan kenobi a trailer would have taken everything away from everything and it occurred to me halfway through this here stream that i was like oh yeah 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 that's why 
Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of those characters now that we have been spending years asking to see return. When we saw Force Awakens, we were like, Obi-Wan Kenobi needs to be in this. Right? You heard him in Force Awakens talking to Rey. The hype was real. And for many, many years, the fans, the Star Wars lovers, people who love story, mythologies, the, the, the idea of hero's journeys, that how many levels and differences that is, like the grayness of the hero's journey. You know, for me, that's what I love. That's what Far, uh, Fernandez and I would, would love talking about when we talk Star Wars. Story. And Obi-Wan Kenobi now, it's like, we knew. We knew when he hands off little Luke to Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, the end of Revenge of the Sith, we go, we, there's 20 years now that we haven't seen. And so we started clamoring. We started banging those, those bells. Banging those bells? Sure. Make that into a shirt. We started getting so excited for Obi-Wan Kenobi that we'd start filling in the blanks ourselves. Hell, Fernandez, remember? We were going to do this. Uh, we wanted to do a fan kind of um, radio show where we wrote our interpretation of what Obi-Wan Kenobi was doing. And then we started filling in blanks with Clone Wars and then especially with Rebels. But we always knew the story that Obi-Wan Kenobi from afar watched over Luke Skywalker. And all the while, Ewan McGregor would go and do Wonderful work everywhere outside of Star Wars. And all anybody cared about was Obi-Wan Kenobi. That guy must have been, do you think, you and McGregor must have had a few days there, right? Where you McGregor probably went home and went, these motherfuckers and Obi-Wan, just, I'm, I'm in doctor sleep. You know, but he's such a good sport. Jeff, yeah, Jeff Weisberg. Of course, we got the same thing that was dropped yesterday. It was a leak. Um. Uh, yeah, it was a leak. From what we understand, uh, I think Ken Napsuk told me this. It was uh, uh, basically um, it was the Disney it was the Disney Plus Twitter account from Holland, maybe that dropped it on accident. Maybe it was a poor intern that was like, "Oh, whoopsie daisies." But that's okay, we got it. It's there. Fine. The reason why Obi Wan Kenobi just has really hit with us is because of that story and how he's connected to Luke. And I think it really does always start with going back to that relationship that was cemented with the New Hope, explored in the Clone Wars, um, furthered with Rebels. Uh, and then we get the Obi-Wan Kenobi comics, which were great. I don't remember much of them. I read them. But it was us, the fans, that kept that kind of that story going, that idea that Obi-Wan Kenobi was always there. There was a great Legends comic that I remember. And it was like Luke was in a marketplace on Tatooine. Does anybody remember this one? It's a comic form. This is the Dark Horse days. And uh, an assassin came after Luke. And Obi-Wan Kenobi literally came out of the motherfucking sand. He's <laughs> lightsaber and took him out. And it was like this. Obi-Wan? The story of Obi-Wan, if we consider the hero's journey... This is the dark, this is the dark days. This is when all hope is lost for Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is where he's crossed the threshold. If we consider the, the hero's journey, if we probably look at it at Clone Wars, his call to adventure is to be a Jedi. You know, his crossing the threshold is probably getting the kyber crystal and getting his lightsaber. And his journey starts. And he has, he loses a mentor in, in um, Qui-Gon Jinn, which is then echoed. That is echoed into what he decides to do for Luke Skywalker as they escape the Death Star there. He remembers that moment of losing Maul, losing Qui-Gon to Maul, what that did to him. That was the echo I saw with Phantom Menace and New Hope. And so Obi-Wan Kenobi now continues his hero's journey through Attack of the Clones and meeting up with his future best friend or his best friend, his brother, Anakin Skywalker, and the relationship blossoms. And then we get the Clone Wars and we and we just dissect that and we go deep into that where the echoes in the, and the, we remember the great Alec Guinness who was nominated for an Academy Award for Obi-Wan Kenobi in New Hope in 1977. 
He sits there and he sits back and he remembers, your father was a good pilot and a good friend. I fought in the Clone Wars. And the gravitas in that voice that Obi-Wan talks about, he's at the end of his hero's journey there, right? He's just about to make the ultimate sacrifice. This is all to be talking about why Obi-Wan Kenobi would have broken the internet should they have. It didn't occur to me halfway through this stream. I want your guys' thoughts on this. If they would have dropped an Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer today, that's all we would have talked about. Echo, that that the great logo that was announced today through Marvel, gone. Moon Knight would have been mentioned, but that tease would have been snuffed. We create the hype. And uh, Obi-Wan, yeah. Where we are with Obi-Wan Kenobi is the most fascinating thing that I can't wait to dissect because it's what we've been talking about for 20 years now. What was Obi-Wan Kenobi doing in the in the desert, beyond the Dune Sea? Old Ben watching after Luke, probably communicating with Qui-Gon Jinn. Perhaps, and it shows, we are going off planet. You know, whether we're going to focus on some different characters, Hayden Christensen is back. Does Darth Vader become our villain? Well, yeah, seems pretty uh, likely. But I think we are going to get, I touched on it earlier, when Darth Vader listens to Luke on, on the planet Endor, the moon of Endor, and Luke pleads, not pleads, but just, there's still good in you. I feel it, Father. He says, it's too late for me, son. They take him away. But is it? Because Anakin... Pops out for a hot second there. And Darth Vader, he looks out into the forest and he ponders this. So the idea that Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to explore some of these threads that we've seen in Return of the Jedi, that Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to also have to grapple with his own guilt, perhaps. That he was given a task at the end of Revenge of the Sith from Yoda. Yoda's going to be in this thing, right? It just occurred to me. He's on Dagobah. Obi-Wan's got to talk and commune with him. Does he go off-world to go meet with Yoda in secret? Do we learn more about the, 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 the Force-sensitive areas of Dagobah that was explored in some of the Clone Wars stuff in the animated series? You see, this is why the hype is real. Obi-Wan Kenobi would have just broken the internet in so many ways that are so awesome. And so if we can end on a uh, on a high note here, I think what we can look forward to is that Obi-Wan Kenobi is in the can, right? It's finished filming, or maybe it's almost done. I believe a trailer will come, and that Disney Plus, this was a big marketing thing, right? They got their Pixars and their Disney films and their Marvel films and series and animated and yada yada, National Geographic, Beatles documentary. All of that goes away with Obi-Wan Kenobi, in my humble opinion. I think they would have dropped that. So... We're going to look forward to that. Obi-Wan Kenobi is probably going to be getting a trailer soon, I would think. I think they're going to wait for the hype to just the Disney Plus day to kind of finish. And then we're going to see an Obi-Wan Kenobi trailer maybe in a couple maybe weeks, maybe a month, maybe before Book of Boba Fett, maybe during Book of Boba Fett, we get some kind of look. William and I say this in the best way. I think Mace Windu is gone, and I hope he stays gone. And I tell you, the reason for that for me is character. Um, his sacrifice then would be for naught. Because where was he then? You know, I, I know we, we do this as fans. We fill in blanks and we, we want to see certain things. And I love the idea of a, of a cyborg Mace Windu who ultimately fell to the dark side because of that moment with Palpatine and Anakin Skywalker. But I think it would really take away from his arc that he was there. It would it would. It would take away Anakin's own fall to the dark side, which was part of this. He killed his master. I think it just, I think it negates a lot of things there. Um, but if it's done right, and if Deborah Chow wants to do it, I'm all for seeing it. All right, everybody, that is it for me on Riley's Cantina here. A little recap on Disney Plus Day. What did you think? If you're watching on the rewatch here, drop in some comments, please. Tell me what. Your thoughts were on what happened with Disney Plus, what your favorite announcements were, what your favorite looks were, your little sneak peeks, whether it's She Hulk, whether it was Moon Knight, or maybe it was a sizzle reel for Obi Wan Kenobi that I do believe will break the internet once it lands here. 
uh, do drop in those comments below. And if you're watching this on the replay, please hit that like button as well. It really helps. Everybody, I want to appreciate and uh, say thanks to all of you and your support from the Good People Association now over back on the channel. We're going to be going live every Tuesday and Thursday here on Riley's Cantina and on this channel, which is youtube.com slash Mark Riley Roundtable. Head on over to my Patreon page, too, if you want to snoop around there and check some out, uh, check out some of the things we got going on there, which is. Oh, what happened? There we go. Patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable. You can get that in there. We do movie watch alongs. We've just picked. Speaking of Star Wars, everybody on the Patreon page, we're going to be getting the original script, the shooting script to Empire Strikes Back. We're going to be reading that while watching along with Empire Strikes Back. That's a new tier on the writer's room tier. You can get that with me. A bunch of us sit down with the script, watch the movie. That's going to be a fun one. We're scheduling this one now. So go check out the Patreon page on that. And writers, I got your submissions. The submission period is closed now for writer's room. But I will get you next time. Every month we have a writer's room. And the last Saturday of every month we do the writer's room as well. Every Tuesday on the Patreon page, we do our movie trivia schmodown scrimmage. It's you guys against me. That happens every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Pacific. So if you want to join the Patreon page, it is there for you. Patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable. And I do have some super chats coming in here. Richard, my friend, thank you so much. Nothing like listening to Riley uh, wax rhapsodic about the meaning of the character of Obi-Wan. Love it. Thank you, my friend. I would love doing it, and I'm going to do, be doing that a lot more. I love this. Brian Jackson, Mr. McClunky, the Jamie Costas fan short was awesome. Go work. Go work, Mark. Go Hawks. <laughs> Go work. Thank you, Brian Jackson, Mr. McClunky. I appreciate the super chats there. And that Jamie Costa fan short was amazing. It was very awesome. So again, everybody, go check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Riley Roundtable. If you do want to donate to the channel, I am rebuilding my studio at home. I'm going to be uh, making it a lot nicer than I was last year, but I'm doing something special that I cannot wait to share with you all. So if you have any donations you want to send my way, Streamlabs is always open. And at streamlabs.com slash Mark Riley, you can get me there. Appreciate all of you joining me here on the Riley Round, or sorry, I almost said the Riley Roundtable. It's Riley's Cantina. Here on this special Friday that we went live at 12 noon. It was a recap of Disney Plus Day. I was very excited for what we did get. A little disappointed on everything. Want to know what you thought about it. So drop those in on the comment section below. For the rest of you, please enjoy your day. And thank you for making Riley's Cantina a part of yours. For all the support, for all the love and the support, everything. It means the world to me to know that you guys have my back like this. Thank you for joining me here. And I'll see you next time on Riley's Cantina. <laughs>